What is going on, football fans? Back at it with another New York Giants video. Change the background for you guys, at least temporary, uh, until such time we find out who the new head coach is going to be. I saw a lot of comments with you guys that said, Chris, you got to change the background. Joe Judge isn't the coach anymore. You're absolutely right. So we'll change that background once we get some of the answers as to new uh, as to who the new head coach is going to be. Hopefully you guys today enjoy the playoff games. I've got the Packers in the later game. I got the Titans in the first game. That's just my picks. I just think the Titans with an extra week to prepare are going to find a way to beat the Bengals. But regardless, enjoy the games in this video. We're going to touch on a couple of things regarding the New York Giants. I'm going to touch on an article that came out, to, uh, I think it was yesterday, from Paul Schwartz. Got the quotes off GiantsWire.com. Talking about Daniel Jones, the quarterback. I'll give my full opinion on everything that came out from the article and what Paul Schwartz had to say regarding his sources from within inside the New York Giants organization and how he feels this new regime and Joe Shane feel about the quarterback for the New York Giants. Because, of course, that's going to be the biggest question from a player personnel standpoint from all the fans. Once you have a regime change with a new GM and new head coach with no ties to your prior quarterback, a quarterback that has not really delivered a lot of wins, will they move on from the quarterback position, draft a quarterback, potentially trade for a quarterback? Who knows? So I'll talk about all the quotes that came out from Schwartz. Also, wanted to touch on some of the candidates that the New York Giants are scheduled and already, believe it or not, have interviewed uh, for the head coaching position for the Giants. And right now, the list is five names. Now, I expect... Before I get into the names, I expect this list to grow. I think the Giants are going to bring in at least seven, if not eight, maybe even more candidates for the head coaching position. After all, they interviewed nine GM candidates. Last time around, I believe they were set to interview seven head coaching candidates when they came to Joe Judge's their answers. So I expect there to be more names. I still think there's going to be other guys out there that the Giants bring in. Some popular names you hear about that are possibilities are Todd Bowles, who's not quite on the list. You hear about Doug Peterson. Um, Aaron Glenn has been a name that I've, I've heard that has been thrown about. Who knows? Maybe even a guy like Don Wink Martindale, who we interviewed last time, who was actually fired from the Baltimore Ravens, a guy that maybe you want to consider if you're not bringing Patrick Graham back uh, to be your defensive coordinator that you may want to give a call. But first, let's jump into the five names that we know about. And actually, Shane has already interviewed one, and he's set to interview a second today. Now, they're going to be short interviews. He already has a lot of familiarity with both of those candidates. The first one being the guy who I think right now is probably the odds-on favorite to land this job, and that being Brian Dable. Dable, of course, the offensive coordinator for the Buffalo Bills, already interviewed at least for the first time with Joe Shane yesterday. And I think the reason he did this was probably due to the fact that I think there's a rule if they make this, uh, the Super Bowl that you're not allowed to conduct a first interview with either with, with any candidate that's going to be partaking in that game. You, I think you are, however, allowed to conduct a second. That's at least what I read on Twitter. Regardless, he has already interviewed for the first time Brian Dable, and I'm sure that interview didn't really have too much substance to it. Those guys have been working together for the last four or five years. He knows what Dable brings to the table has done a really good job with Josh Allen. That's the book on him. I'll do a more in-depth video on him probably tomorrow or the day after being that right now, I think he's the favorite to probably be the new head coach for the New York Giants. Doesn't mean he's going to get the job. If you would ask me who was the favorite last time around during the coaching search, I certainly wouldn't have told you Joe Judge. Probably would have told you Matt Rule. So we're going to hear a lot of different you know, rumors and things that may be changing throughout this entire process, and maybe things will tilt one way or the other. But you got to think that Dable's definitely one of the favorites to get the job, and he's already interviewed. The other candidate who he's set to interview today is another member who he's worked with for a long time, Leslie Frazier, the defensive coordinator for the Buffalo Bills. Bill's defense, since he's been there, has been terrific. One of the better defenses in the NFL uh, over the five years that he's been there. I mean, they made the playoffs, I think, his first year as the D.C., a year in which they really had very little talent on the offensive end. They had Tyrod Taylor as their quarterback. He's a former head coach for two, if not three years, I think it was two years, with the Minnesota Vikings, was also a defensive coordinator there, in which he did a pretty good job. So, Frazier... An intriguing candidate. I know he's not a favorite of a lot of you guys, but definitely a guy that you want to keep an eye on that they already interviewed. And in addition to that, the New York Giants are set already to interview three other candidates that we know about. The first one being the most popular name. I did a video on him yesterday in which I had dug on the channel, Brian Flores. Flores, at least from a record standpoint, when you factor in the team that he inherited, did a pretty damn good job with the Miami Dolphins. He won five games in a year in which nobody thought they'd win more than one or two. The next year, he had them double that total, and they won 10. And they you narrowly missed the playoffs this past year. They finished 9-8, and eight, but they won eight out of their last nine contests. 
the red flags with Flores, which was talked about extensively yesterday with Doug, or the, you know, the fact that he doesn't necessarily get along well with others. His offense struggle, but you could point to some of that at least due to the fact of his limited quarterback with Tua Tango Vailoa. So clearly a guy that it seems like the Giants at least have some interest in. Reports have come out that Mara has already floated about the idea of bringing him in for an interview. I expect the Giants to interview him, and we'll take it from there. There. The other candidate that they're going to be interviewing is somebody that you're very familiar with. Patrick Graham, yes, will in fact be getting an interview, I think according to Tom Pelissero, with the New York Giants to be the head coach for the football team. And Patrick Graham, in the past, um, has said that he would like to be a head coach as recently as about two or three weeks ago when he probably found out that Joe Judge was no longer going to be the head coach for the New York Giants football team. Listen, Patrick Graham, to me, comes across as a really smart guy. I thought he game planned fairly well for the Giants, given the limited talent that he had, specifically in his first year. Thought he got a lot out of that defense. I think most Giant fans agreed with that. This year, a little bit underwhelming, but he didn't have much help on the offensive side of the football. Let's be real. Also had Blake Martinez go down with an injury. I think Graham's a smart guy, and I think he will interview well, and I think he may get a head coaching job in the future. I do not think it'll be with the New York Giants. I just think that's a really hard sell to sell the fan base. He he, after all, was the assistant head coach last year. And if you're completely changing, I don't really see you selling the fan base on Patrick Graham being the head coach for this football team. The one thing that I will say is it may up the probability that he could potentially be back as the D.C., especially if Dable's going to be the head coach. You have to think that Joe Shane and him have a good rapport. And if Graham comes in and really impresses Joe Shane, maybe he does, in fact, keep him on as the defensive coordinator if he does not get a head coaching job somewhere else. If Graham would even want to stay here to be the defensive coordinator, if maybe he felt like there was a better opportunity somewhere else. But I would think that it, that it may at least up the probability if he were to interview well. What it does for Graham is I think it gives him some experience in terms of going Going through the process of interviewing for a head coaching job, and it may put his name out there. I think it's the New York Giants just giving him some respect because they thought he did a pretty good job as the defense coordinator with the football team. But if you ask me right now, more than likely, I think the Giants will look outside the organization at that position. And there's definitely some very intriguing names as potential defensive coordinators, uh, Vic Fangio being one of them. Probably the biggest name, in addition to that, Don Wink Martindale, who was unexpectedly fired by the Baltimore Ravens yesterday because the defense kind of tailed off, but they had a lot of injuries in that secondary. The other guy we're going to talk about is Dan Quinn. Dan Quinn is the fifth and final guy, at least as of now, that the New York Giants are set to interview. Like I said, I expect this list to expand. Quinn, former Super Bowl coach, didn't win, but he got there. They choked away a 28-3 lead. I would argue, and many would argue, that was probably due more to the fact of Kyle Shanahan's play calling. But regardless, Quinn kind of struggled his last two years there. Giant fans seem to be sour on the idea of bringing him in. But he has had some results as a head coach in the NFL and definitely had results as a defensive coordinator this past year with the Dallas Cowboys. So as of now, that's the five-man search. I think Dable is by far the favorite right now. Things could change drastically, though, as the search persists. Now I want to jump into the article by Paul Schwartz of the New York Post regarding Daniel Jones. And before I pull up these quotes, take a lot of this with a grain of salt, at least in my opinion. Joe Shane should not come out and say that he hates his quarterback, that he doesn't want to work with his quarterback, because it's only going to hurt his value. If he were to want to move on from Daniel Jones, you don't want to hurt his trade value. You also don't want to tilt your hand as to what you want to do in the draft. All that being said, I believe this, and I do think in the end, if you ask me today, Daniel Jones will come in as the starter for the New York Giants, but as I've said all along for the last two or three months, I think there will be a significant upgrade at the backup quarterback position and a guy that will push Jones if he's struggling and a guy that could step in if Daniel Jones goes down with an injury. I think Jones will be the starter, but I don't think they're going to roll out the red carpet like they've done the two previous years when they brought in guys like Colt McCoy and they and um, obviously this past season with Mike Lennon. I think this year, don't be don't be surprised if they bring in a guy like Mitch Trubisky who could step in and at least provide satisfactory quarterback play if Daniel Jones goes down with an injury or starts off, you know, very poorly. But according to Paul Schwartz of the New York Post, expect Daniel Jones to potentially be your starter going into next year based off the things that he's heard from Joe Shane. Here we go. I was told that Joe Shane believes that Daniel Jones can be his quarterback. He didn't go into the GM interview and say, number one, Daniel Jones is out. We're drafting a quarterback or we're signing one. What I was told is there was talk about the offensive line being really bad, which I love to hear. And you know that if you watch my channel, I think that needs to be the primary focus this offseason is to get that line back to where it needs to be. And about all the injuries to the skill players that compromised what Daniel Jones could do more than Joe Shane saying, I don't like your quarterback at all. Then later went on to say this. 
What do you think about Daniel Jones was one of the very first questions the owners asked the GM candidates. It is believed that that Shane said he can make it work with Jones, that Jones was hurt by a bad offensive line and too many injuries to the skill players. Expect Jones, if his sprained neck is fully healed, to be the number one quarterback in 2022. That does not mean the Giants will ignore the position. Shane will upgrade the competition around Jones, but do not dismiss the possibility of taking a quarterback in the first three rounds of the NFL draft. Shane, in his first year with Buffalo, watched Tyrod Taylor help the Bills end a 17-year playoff drought, but that didn't stop the team from taking Josh Allen with its first pick in the 2018 draft. And that, of course, was the first draft that Joe Shane was with the team. He was with the team in 2017, but came in after the draft, which would kind of hint that they may take a quarterback in 2023 if they followed that same pattern. This as well. Shorts also believes that based on his information he's gathered, Jones will be the quarterback in 2022. However, there will be a new quarterback too, one specifically added to push Jones for the starting spot. And you could guess as to who that would be. I think Mitch Trubisky is the natural guess due to the fact that he was with the Bills this past year. He also has a similar skill set to that of Daniel Jones. So I think he would make for like a really solid backup for the New York Giants and a guy that could potentially push Daniel Jones, a former, I think he was a second overall pick and a guy that has won football games in the NFL. And I think would at least come in if Jones got hurt or was really struggling and wouldn't embarrass the football team. But in the end, as I've said for the last two or three months, I think this is the right decision. I don't think the New York Giants this year should take a quarterback in a draft class that many feel is not the richest quarterback draft class, and nobody's going to convince me, at least the way I feel right now. I will do more research on these prospects that Malik Willis or Matt Corral or Kenny Pickett is not available in next year's draft. When I say that, a quarterback that is just is talented, if not more talented, and that's the way I look at it. I don't view any of these quarterbacks in this draft right now as being a elite talent. Now, could it happen? Sure. The quarterback position is incredibly unpredictable, which is what I, why I could argue it's probably even less of a reason why you should draft one in this year's draft when you have such a poor surrounding roster, whether it be the offensive line or all the injury, you know, play, you know, injury injuries they've had at the skill positions in recent years. But we'll see what the New York Giants decide to do. By the looks of it. It, it looks like Daniel Jones more than likely will be the starter going into next year, but don't consider it a foregone conclusion. And the New York Giants still could absolutely draft the quarterback if they're blown away. But I wanted to talk about both those things being that I think that's going to be a really hot topic of conversation going into the offseason. Who's going to be the New York Giants starting quarterback? I think in the end it'll be Jones, but I think we'll have a big upgrade at the backup. And who knows? Maybe we could still take a quarterback. As always, guys, if you liked what you watched, please subscribe. Drop a comment. Maybe give me a little thumbs up. Cheers.